Ever wonder what it was like to just be free? To adventure and explore without the white picket fence, the eight to five, and to throw away the golden handcuffs? Well, we did. So we bought a 1980 Downeaster Cutter that had been neglected for decades, sailed her up north, rounding Point Conception, and making her way to her new home port on the central coast of California. We've been fixing her up and prepping her for blue water cruising ever since. Follow along our journey, leave us a comment, and if you like, press subscribe and hit that notification bell. With new episodes every Thursday, tune in weekly to watch our adventures towards hopefully becoming full-time cruisers. Thanks for watching. The growing green of the central coast hillside stretches off to one side. Wind chill shocks my face and ocean breeze off to my other. The dogs run around like they were never meant to be tamed in the first place. The happiest I've seen them. My boots crunch with each step on the dried eel grass and the thought that this could soon be my daily walk, my new backyard, the calm in between project storms, excites me and overwhelms me all at once. Moving onto the boat and becoming full-time liveaboards is our next short-term goal, the stepping stone until we set sail south for Mexico. Oh, man, I am strong. Is your confession safe? <laughs> okay. Yes! <laughs> oh, I spent the last like 30 minutes trying to get this last bolt out and the reason it took so long is because it was actually like adhered to this metal plate that was underneath the deck and so yeah it just took a lot of woman power we've been so busy preparing our land home for rent that we haven't been able to start any big projects on the boat every project matters so i started off the week servicing the winch see that's all from just the inside of the wheel They are so easy to lose because when you're cleaning them, they like you take the prowl out of the gear and the spring just goes spring and like finally got it out. And these should actually not have grease on them. And it is covered. They just need a little dab of oil. So I'm gonna clean them up and reassemble it. all the way, but <laughs> yes. oh, it's beautiful. Okay, I only spent the whole afternoon servicing this winch, <laughs> but as Grant and I say, one little thing a day. What do you think, Cash? We did the winch. High five. No, shake. Okay. Never mind. Amber, come here. Amber! What is she doing? Are you stuck? Come here! Oh! Look at poor thing! You're stuck! Oh, how did that happen? Oh gosh! Okay, hang on. Oh my. Time job, but I love them.
We decided to take the weekend off, drive up north the four hours to San Rafael, north of San Francisco, where I'm originally from, and spend a belated Christmas with my parents. We admired the towering coastal redwoods, made homemade pasta, exchanged some laughs, and per our family tradition, explored the Lagunitas Creek, where the largest remaining wild run of coho salmon reside. Viewing spawning salmon has been a family tradition of mine since I can remember, and one that I'm really grateful for. I have memories of my childhood dog trying to catch the splashing salmon straight from the creeks. Nowadays, we are lucky to see a few a year. Here we are, sister ship. We also managed to squeeze in some boat-related activities as well. At least it's still floating today. I was worried about that driving up here. This is John. I was like, oh no, they're gonna come and see it and it's gonna be like... Underwater? Yeah. No, it's well, just you can just see the rails. He also owns a Downeaster Cutter and invited us to come check it out. He got it for the good bones despite it needing some work and is also prepping to cruise. We've noticed that there's minor differences within each ship that was produced, but it was so cool seeing Mundial's sister ship. The Down Easter, launched in 1884, was a type of 19th century sailing ship built in Maine and used largely in the California grain trade. The phrase apparently derives from sailing terminology of sailors from western ports sailing downwind toward the east to reach the area. After enjoying some quality time with family and prepping the house with the new floors for renters, we were able to get to work on the boat. Uh, yeah, this is currently what the boat looks like. Uh, not too bad, but we need to take out all that stuff and yeah, decide what to do with the old AC units and some other little tasks on the agenda today. So we're going to get to it. I'm sure you don't need help. It's outboard. We're here working on the plumbing for getting the tank overboard or the tank up through the deck. So one of the things I think I'm gonna do to clean up, as you can see, there's that deck fitting right there. It comes down, it's this red hose here. It does this sweep. I think what I'm gonna do is disconnect it up there at that fitting and maybe take a little bit of hose out. You see, it's just kind of laying in here and I don't want to kink it because I'll show you what kinking hoses does, but I do feel like there's kind of a lot and it's a little bit messy in here. So hopefully I can get this cleaned up a little bit. But to show you what's going on with kinked hoses, so this hose was part of the pump out situation. We have the Guzzler pump here. It's a manual pump and that's what was installed to 
manually discharge the black water out of the boat. So I think I'm gonna stick with that system for now instead of having to run wiring and do the mastic, macerator pump. But uh, I do have the macerator pump and who knows, maybe I will install it eventually. But for now, we're gonna go back with this. But an issue was it was oriented in the boat like this. But as you can tell, the tank is over here. And the discharge is over that direction. So it was oriented 90 degrees, which I like because you only have to move the cushions up a little bit to access where the pump handle would go. And it goes forward and back like this. Well, I guess port and starboard like this. So the previous owner installed the hoses. And over time, those hoses decided that uh, collapsing to make that pretty much 90 degree bend that it had to make was their only option. You can see I cut this one off the front. It was a little better, but still not that great. This one, it's hard to tell. It's nearly completely occluded. So I know it's against popular demand, popular desires, but I'm going to use 90s. The reason being is I don't think we're going to pump this out that often. I hope that we will be able to do other options, like go direct overboard when we're cruising. And the other option is this is what I have, and trying to find a barbed sweep seemed to not be an option. So that the sharp corner is what people's concerned about is whatnot. So. I figure I'll get some enzymes and make sure that the tank is always uh, healthy, which would be breaking down any solids, and that way we can flush this out. Additionally, since it's a manual discharge, I can work the toilet in such a way that as we're discharging, I can flip it back over and basically flush the toilet a whole bunch, filling it with salt water and going through that rinsing process. Yes, it's not ideal, but it is an option we have, and it's not gonna cost us any extra money than what we already have got going on. So, let's see if we can get these installed. I'm going to have to get a hole saw so that I can make it a little cleaner. But, as you can tell, previous owner has gone through many iterations of holes in the boat and the bulkheads and what's going on. So, what's a few more holes, eh? Something that's been bothering me for quite a while, like weeks, is this gear shifter and this one. So Grant got a replacement and now I'm going to install it. He said it only takes 10 minutes, so uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. And yes, I am wearing Sailor James on Tritea, ordered one of his sweatshirts. And he also comes from Long Beach, I think. I'm not really sure, but I think we come from the same marina, our boats do. Anyway, fun fact. And I'm also a fan of his YouTube channel. bearing he was talking about Gosh. oftentimes with these bow projects I really wonder how guys do it with like bigger hands or women I guess but it's so hard if you have big fingers to get things out here it is there is the dirty rusty ball bearing the ball bearing itself is fine but it's a bunch of dirt on it Unscrew the zerk bidding, which would gain us access to the other side of it. Using technology, we looked up the manual for our Suzuki outboard, and yeah, we're gonna use that to get to the parts we need to clean. Yeah. Okay, now what? If you drill it, eventually you're gonna feel like you're 
turning against metal. And then hopefully once that's bored out, you should be able to try to jiggle the spring out. Well, we got the spring out and it is like covered in gunk and not much spring left to it so we got to get a new spring She's back together now now we need Found out we need a spring and two O-rings. We have to get that spring out and we might as well order the ball bearing. Yeah. So probably gonna be a like 10 more or things to do. parts each. How's it going? Oh you know, it's it's better to fix problems before they're big problems. Oh it stinks. So luckily our black it's tank was really just full bad. of water. What? The T fitting on the black tank, I j removed this hose and the bar broke off. And of course, by the time I got this plug, it wasn't really the right size. And also, the majority of the water already drained out into the bilge. Luckily, it was just water. But right behind this, where that fitting is going to, is our black tank. I so, think... you might have to make another trip back to eight. Okay, I could do that. Um, you know, with bad news, we always need a little good news. And this is your good news. You're going to have me squeeze my lime. <laughs> God, it stinks. It's a plumbing problems. What are you doing, hon? I'm putting my contacts on. Okay. Well, we stayed at the dock last night just because it was late and raining. Now we're gonna go put the boat away and go do some chores at home. We're gonna try to get our house rented.